Hello, my name is Paul Bevan from Siemens Digital Industry Software and I'd like to talk to you today about how we can use convergent modeling to assist us in the reverse engineering process. So here I am in my NX session with a convergent body which we know is facet geometry. Now NX has powerful tools that enable you to work directly with facet geometry and use it for downstream applications. However, there are times when you may want to re-engineer a scanned component. And to do this, you'll need to perform some reverse engineering. NX has a number of tools that allow you to work directly with facet geometry and extract the information and the geometry that you need to complete the reverse engineering process. So the body I have on the screen is a convergent sheet body. And if we just rotate the model, you can see it has no thickness. To start the reverse engineering process, I need to split up my convergent body into segments. And to do this, I'm going to use the facet body curvature command. What this command allows me to do is to create a color map that differentiates areas of high and low curvature in my facet body. It also helps me to set up a proper patch structure for my reverse engineering process. The color map itself can be used with the extract feature command, which you will see, to extract separate facet bodies for either concave, convex or flat areas. So I select my convergent body and the color coding appears reflecting the current threshold radii size for both concave and convex. Concave geometry is colored yellow, while convex geometry is colored in green. Anything colored falls within the current threshold radii. We can modify that radii to see what effect that has. But in this case, as we're working with a sheet body, we may not be looking at it from the right direction. It's not a problem. We can simply reverse the direction that we're looking at, and there we have the display that we are looking for. So I'll continue to increase the threshold radio. Type in another value, 500. We can also use the slider bar to increase it. And as I drag it up and then release it, the display automatically updates. So I've been able to segment my convergent body based on curvature. However, I can also segment the body by using a paint command, which is what we'll take a look at next. Here, when I select the paint command, I can select facet geometry. In this case, I'm going to select tangent facets. And then I can select an area and apply specific color to it. I'll do the same for another area of the facet body, but I'll change the color. Select the area and apply that color. So now I've got my segmented convergent body. So where do we go next? Welcome back. So we've segmented our facet body. So how do we use these segmentations to further the reverse engineering design process? Well, we'll start by creating some topology directly on the facet body. We're going to use divide facet face. There's an option to divide by region. There's also an option to divide by curves, but we're using the region option. And then we're going to use the color region selection criteria. So this is where I can take advantage of the preparation work I did by coloring the faces of the facet body. I can now select the areas individually by color and then on applying the command, you'll now notice that we have a facet body, but with separate face topology. To go the next step, I now need to extract that topology from this single facet body. So I'm going to activate my surfacing tab and I do this by selecting mouse button 3 
in the ribbon and choosing surface. Doing this automatically activates the surface tab and now I go on to select the extract geometry command and select the topology I've created. What this now provides me with are separate extracted faces and if I hide the convergent body you can see them. You can also see them as features within the part navigator. So these extracted faces are still facet geometry. So I'm going to use a technique to create precise geometry by referencing the extracted faces. And to do this I'm going to use the fit surface command. This command allows me to create a brand new surface that references the extracted faces I've created. You can reparameterize this new surface so that it more closely follows the extracted face and you'll see me doing this through the next few steps. You notice as soon as I select my first extracted geometry that it generates a surface. It's a best fit surface and it has a parameterization of degree 5 by 5. You'll also notice in the results area of the dialog that there's a maximum and average error. That is how far away the new geometry is from the original. It's possible to reduce this error by modifying the parameterization. Notice as I turn up the degree to 6 by 6 that my maximum and average errors have been reduced. I'm happy with these results so I'll accept this and OK or apply the command. So I'll continue to do this for some of the other extracted features. Again just modifying the degree to reduce the error so that the surface more closely follows the original geometry. In this case we'll just reduce the degree and again we've got good results. The final surface we're going to create is this one. So to get a clearer view of our new surfaces I'm just going to hide the extracted faces and there we have our four fit surfaces. So we have a few more steps to complete our reverse engineering process. Let's take a look. Welcome back. So I've got my four new surfaces and now I'm looking to close the gaps between them so I can complete the task of reverse engineering our original facet body. The first step in the process will be to increase the size of the surfaces and we have a particularly useful tool called Enlarge in the surface application that will allow me to do this. I select the command, I then pick the surface and notice I get four drag handles, one on each edge. I simply drag the edge to a new position. You'll also see from the dialog box that the enlarge can either follow in a linear fashion or follow the natural curvature of the surface and we can switch between the two modes. So I'm going to continue to enlarge the three other fit surfaces I created. Again, just by selecting and dragging the handles. You can also use the slider bars in the dialog as well if you wish. So that's the first one done. I'll do this one here. Again, just select and drag. Very visual, very dynamic. Then finally, this surface. Again, just making sure that they extend through the other surfaces. And there we have it completed. 
So I have my four overbuilt surfaces. What I'd like to do now is to bring them all together so that they form the basic shape that I want. And to do this, I'm going to use the combine command in NX. The combine command is a very fast and effective way of creating one single sheet body from multiple separate bodies. In fact, if the sheet bodies themselves form an enclosed volume, it'll automatically generate you a solid body. You'll notice that when I select the combine command, the dialog consists of two specific groups. There's the group for selecting the bodies you want to combine. And then the second one is looking at the region. That is, which piece of the surfaces you want to either keep or remove. So I'm going to select my first surface in the area that I want to keep. The same with the second surface, the third surface. And notice that the geometry is dynamically updating, showing you exactly what's happening with the combine. And once I OK the command, I now have my single combined sheet body. The final thing I want to do is to soften the edges. And to do that, I'm going to use blending. The first one will be face blend. And I want to change the width method to constant. Specify a blend width. And then select the faces. Now in this instance, I've selected body faces. So I need to change that to single face. So I select the first face and I reverse the direction vector because that needs to point towards the center of the radius. I select the second face and again I can use the drag handle if I want to to modify the size. Once I'm happy with the size then I apply it and my blend appears. So I create the same blend on the other side. Again reverse the direction vector pick my second face, I get the blend preview and we apply that. The final blend around the top of this part I'm going to use edge blend. A value of 120 I pick up all the tangent edges I OK the command and there we have our final blend. I can do a comparison between the original convergent body and what we've just generated through reverse engineering there would be some further work to be done, but you've seen some of the powerful capabilities that NX has for reverse engineering facet geometry. I'd like to thank you for your time and attention.